Hey there, folks. It's time to investigate slew rate and power bandwidth for our op amp circuits. The last thing we looked at was the effective compensation capacitance. And we noted there was a little capacitor. This is the driver stage, right? Here's your class B output. There was a little capacitor right here. This is your compensation capacitor that forces that 20 dB per decade roll off. Very important for stability and setting up our gain bandwidth product. There is another effect on here, and that is the slew rate, which is the maximum rate of change of voltage with respect to time. So we call that slew rate, often just abbreviated SR. So, you know, the slew is, you know, how quickly it can change. So this is essentially defined in terms of dV out dt. What is the maximum rate of change of voltage at the output? It's important to remember this is output referred. Because it's output referred, the gain of the amplifier is not particularly important. Whether we have uh, feedback to set up a gain of 1 or a gain of 15, it's not really going to matter. The slew rate is output defined. Ultimately, what happens is this little capacitor is driven by a prior stage. When, when it maxes out, that's a maximum current that can feed this, a saturation current. And we have a circuit that looks essentially like this. I have a current. I have a capacitor. And what I want to know is what's this voltage? Well, from uh, basic definition, dV dt is equal to I over C. So if I have a constant current, right, I've got a saturation current, then what we're saying is this is a constant value, dV dt. It's a ramp. So it's a function of how big that current is and the size of the capacitor. Well, the capacitor size is fixed by the, um, the compensation limitation as far as the F unity is concerned. So we're kind of limited there. If we want this to have a, a big DVDT value, a big rate of change, in other words, a very steep slope, then I need a big current. So it's kind of like a, like a sports car. You get a big engine, it's going to suck down a lot of gas. So um, generally amplifiers like that are not very efficient. Super fast amplifiers tend not to be very efficient as far as uh, their current consumption. And conversely, amplifiers that are sold that are that are marketed for you know very very low power consumption probably aren't going to be very fast in any case this is what ends up happening two things if you have a square wave some kind of pulse it'll turn it into like a, like a little trapezoidal shape in other words or possibly a triangle so this is your v out over here and let's say I'm supposed to have a nice square wave. Well, because of the maximum rate of change, the dVdt, what we'll actually get is something that kind of goes like this. It'll come up at a certain rate. That's my dVdt right there. It'll catch up, and then same thing will happen on the downside. Come over here, same thing. So you can see what's happening, right? It's kind of turning it into like this truncated um, triangle wave. If the wave is very fast, you know, if the square wave is very, very fast, then this ramp won't even reach the peak. And what you'll wind up with is a triangle wave. So there's a little comparison you can make here, which is that um, you know, clipping on an amplifier, if you overload an amplifier and it clips, it basically turns everything into a square wave, right? Slew limiting tries to turn everything into a triangle wave. And that would include a sine wave. So if I threw in a sine wave, and the sine wave is changing faster than the slew rate, we'll see the same effect. So here's my sine wave. So the slew would do something like this. Right? If it can only go this fast, it's going to kind of come up to here. And then it might follow this for a little while, but then, again, it's too slow. And then the same thing. So, you know, the same thing ha happens, and you wind up with this triangle wave. This is a horrible form of distortion. We don't like this, all right? And it's also important to remember that this effect right here is not the same as rise time.
or fall time. Rise time on a square wave is an exponential curve. You know, it's like a single capacitor charge kind of wave shape. And it gives you a clue into what the F2 of the system is. This is not the same. This is just a straight line effect. So our real question is, on this sine function, well, how big can the sine wave be, or how fast can the sine wave be before we get slew-induced distortion, right? Slew-induced distortion. So, you know, I want to avoid that. Well, we basically look at the input waveform and we say, that's a sine wave at the output, generically speaking. Again, I don't really care what the gain is. Um, we're going to have some peak value, sine 2 pi ft. Right? That's, you know, the generic description of my output sine wave. So I need to find the rate of change, because after all, the slew rate is defined in terms of dv dt. So all I have to do is take the derivative of this function. And that turns out to be, in other words, dv dt, which is the slew rate, or well, will be in just a sec, um, that turns out to be 2 pi f vp times the cosine of 2 pi ft. Now we to find the to find the, the true slew rate, the maximum, right? I just have to evaluate this part of the of the equation to determine its maximum value. Well, that occurs when right, maximum value occurs when t is equal to zero. The cosine function, right, starts up at unity at zero and then falls. So basically, zero crossings over here um, represent zero crossings on the sine wave represent the fastest, steepest part of the waveform. And the cosine of, of zero is one. Therefore, this whole term just kind of goes to one. Nothing quite like multiplying by one, right? So you find out that the maximum case is simply 2 pi f vp. What's the frequency? What's the peak amplitude? All right. We give that frequency a name. We call it power bandwidth, also known as f max. All right, make a little note over here, power bandwidth. Not the same as small signal bandwidth, because we're talking about a large signal response. You could have a, a small signal response, an f2, that's considerably larger uh, or smaller, actually, than the power bandwidth. Um, technically, that's possible. But in any case, just rearranging the equation over here, we find out that uh, f max, your power bandwidth, is equal to slew rate divided by 2 pi vp. So if I have a particular amplifier, I know what the slew rate is. I know what my peak output voltage is supposed to be. I can figure out what the power bandwidth, what f max is. One little trick to remember. Slew rate on uh, a data sheet 99% of the time is specced as volts per microsecond, not volts per second. You have to remember to do that conversion. If you leave it as volts per microsecond, you're going to get an F max in megahertz. Okay? Because that micro is going to flip over into megs. So you either convert it into volts per second so that you get hertz, or you just remember that your answer is in megahertz. Your choice. Okay, so let's do an example. Let's say we have a 741, nice generic op amp. Typical slew rate on a 741 is half a volt per microsecond, which we'll remember is 500,000 volts per second. Now that sounds so fast, right? 500,000 volts per second, wow. But you know, what's a microsecond? You know, microseconds and megahertz. So in the scan, you know, in the span of a full cycle of one megahertz, this thing can only move half a volt. That's really not that quick, right? When you think about it compared to other circuitry. All right, so if I have a circuit and I don't care, again, it's got a gain of five or a gain of 50, if it's inverting or non-inverting, doesn't matter. This is all output referred. If the V out, if the peak is 10 volts, my question is, 
what's the power bandwidth, right? What's F max? All right, well, let's just use our formula. So F max is going to be the slew rate over 2 pi VP. So the slew rate is 500,000 volts per second. Just writing it out long here, long hand so that you remember. 2 pi times VP of 10 volts. So you notice that the volts cancel. And we have units of per second. In other words, cycles per second. Hertz. So that comes out to be just shy of 8 kilohertz. All right, so this thing might have a small signal bandwidth of, uh, you know, 100 kilohertz. If you had a, let's say, a non-inverting amplifier and uh, it had a gain at 10, then the uh, noise gain would also be 10. The 741 has an F unity of about 1 megahertz, so 1 megahertz divided by 10 would get you 100 kilohertz. That would be the F2, the small signal bandwidth. But we find out that the power bandwidth, the large signal bandwidth, is only 8 kilohertz. Um, if we could accept a smaller VP, then we could increase this number, right? If we could accept a 1 volt peak, then this thing would jump up to 80 kilohertz. Okay, so that's just how we kind of have to play that. All right, flip of this. You know, let's kind of look at this the other, sort of the other angle. In other words, I want to do a design and I need to figure out. Example number two. Um, I need to figure out a, a uh, slew rate for a particular device. And again, I can go through a manufacturer's data sheet and find out what will work for me. All right, so let's say I want, I desire, I need an F max of 50 kilohertz using a 5 volt peak output. Now I'm going to give you a little, little side uh, clue on this. For some output, if you consider this to be a maximum, if you set your F max equal to or greater than the F2, right, so the power bandwidth at least is big, maybe bigger, than your small signal bandwidth, you'll never have to worry about slew induced distortion on your sine waves. Because what will end up happening is the gain will start to roll off, in other words, at the F2, and that roll-off rate will essentially compensate because the VP will keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. You're outside the ordinary bandwidth. So you won't get any slewing, right? at least not with these nice sine waves. Okay, so continuing, right? I, I have a, a design I'm working on. Um, I need a power bandwidth of 50, uh, 50 kilohertz for a 5-volt peak. So... I use my same formula, but now I solve it in terms of, of, of slew rate. In other words, I basically um, kind of come back over to this version of it, and I say, all right, my slew rate would have to be at least equal to 2 pi VP times F max. And I'll just throw my numbers in here. So that's 5 volts peak, and then my F max is 50 kilohertz. Now, just as I warned you before about this, this is going to give you an answer in volts per second. And you're going to want to turn that back into volts per microsecond, right? Because I've got units of kilohertz, which are cycles per second. Anyway, so this will work out too when you do the 2 pi uh, 5 volts 50 kilohertz. That works out to 1.57. And I'm going to do this in two steps megavolts per second. Alright, so throw in your 10 to the 6 there and you get 1.57 uh, volts per microsecond. That's your target value. All right, that's what we're going to need. So I'm going to start looking around for op amps that can do that. Well, my venerable 741 is not fast enough. Um, other op amps that you might uh, find around in lab, you know, relatively inexpensive general purpose op amps.
uh, an LF351 is around 13 volts per microsecond. An LF411 is about that fast as well. Um, there are many that are considerably faster than that. You know, a, a 318 is up around, depending on the grade, maybe 50 or 70 volts per microsecond. And you can get specialized op amps that'll do several hundred volts per microsecond, even a few thousand volts per microsecond. But those are very specialized chips. If you find that um, you, you're having difficulty with an amplifier uh, finding an op amp that can give you both the F2 that we looked at in the preceding video and the slew rate that you need, you might consider dividing that up into a two-stage circuit. That will help with the bandwidth, and then it's only the last stage that really would need the, the very high slew rate. Um, here's what I mean. Let's say that um, this output stage has a gain of 10, and this front end stage has a gain of 5. So you throw a signal in here and we decide, you know, this is my example that out here, I want five volts peak at 50 kilohertz. Okay. Well, I'm not saying that all the amplifiers, in this case, both amplifiers have to do this, you know, roughly 1.6 volts per microsecond. Only this one does. This one doesn't. Because when this output's producing 5 volts, that's a gain of 10. So this output, feeding that, is 5 volts divided by 10. At this point, when this is 5 volts, this is only half a volt. Right, because it's going to get multiplied by 10. So, this thing needs a slew rate that's only one-tenth as fast as this one. Because you have the subsequent gain. Now, if you just had this in a single stage amplifier with a gain of 50, right, this amplifier would have to be able to do the 1.57 and 50, assuming this is the noise gain, right, you got, let's say, two non inverting amplifiers, you'd have to have 50 times your 50 kilohertz, right, as far as the overall um, F, uh, F unity value that you would need. Now, that's not particularly nasty in this case. You know, that's just a few megahertz. Uh, but you can imagine a high gain with a much wider bandwidth, right? You can imagine circuits that have bandwidths that are, you know, 10 times this easily. And suddenly you you find that you're um, looking at a, a F unity that has to be, you know, uh, 100 megahertz and you have to have this really high slew rate. And so you might be able to reduce that that requirement if you split it up a little bit, right? You're still going to need the, the, the second stage to have the really high slew rate but the prior stages won't. Okay? All right. That's as good a place as any. I think we've covered that pretty well. Next time.